Donald Trump keeps up the tough talk with North Korea. And I think that's exactly what he should be doing. I'll tell you why. Now, one thing you got to hand Donald Trump is he always leaves them guessing. Yesterday at a uh, joint press conference at the White House with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Donald Trump once again gave us a little uncertainty about North Korea. He said, I'm ready to walk away from the North Korea summit. He said, quote, I'm totally prepared to walk away. And uh, he's saying if Kim Jong-un does not agree to denuclearize, he might very well walk away. Now, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said that when he met with Kim, Kim was fully ready to denuclearize. But the president is leaving all options open, letting North Korea know that just because they came back to the table, it doesn't mean they have carte blanche. They do not have a blank check. Trump said, like I said, I'm totally prepared to walk. Maybe it won't be necessary. I hope it won't be necessary. This is all direct quotes. I believe that Kim Jong-un wants to do something that is going to be great for his people and also great for his family, great for himself. He added that, uh, the president added, that the U.S. could also absolutely sign an agreement to end the Korean War <clears throat> and, and uh, to bring things back to pre-1950s levels with North Korea. Trump is leaving everything on the table. And so when asked if... Uh, he was willing to sign a peace agreement to normalize relationships with Pyongyang. Trump said, quote, we would certainly like to see normalization. We could sign an agreement. That would be a first step. It's what happens after the agreement. But yes, we could absolutely sign an agreement. He went on to say that's really the beginning. Sounds a little bit strange, but that's probably the easy part. The hard part is after that. Now, he did say that he expected to normalize relations with North Korea. The summit, of course, right now is scheduled for next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, actually, June 12th at the Capella Hotel in Singapore. <clears throat> anything can happen over the weekend in this administration. Anything can happen in the next 30 minutes. Now, Trump also said some other very interesting things about uh, North Korea. He said, uh, I hope to do that when it came to normalizing relations with North Korea. He said this is what was very interesting to me. Quote, maximum pressure is in full effect. We don't use that term anymore because we're going into a friendly negotiation. Perhaps after that negotiation, I'll use it again. We'll know how well we do with the negotiation. If you see me say we're going to use maximum pressure, you know the uh, negotiation did not do well, frankly. This is, this is a, a very... Uh, this is a new kind of diplomacy. And I like it. I like it a lot. He said, uh, Trump went on to say, in the meantime, we haven't removed any sanctions. And he said that the United States has over 300 massive sanctions that they're ready to impose on North Korea. The president said he decided to hold off on that until a deal is made. And he believes there's the potential to make a deal. It's... um. It's very nice, very nice. And I use the word nice for what I'm going to read you next. To see a president that puts America first, that understands the weight, the might, the power of the United States of America, that we don't have to be the world's doormat. I tell you that every day. But Trump then said, and he said a lot, this was all caught on video, about uh, not using terms like, uh, what was the term he used? Maximum pressure. Not imposing any of the 300 possible sanctions. The reason he said he decided to hold off on that, he said, I don't think it's nice going in under those circumstances. Like, I don't want to walk into the deal being a jerk. I don't want to walk into the deal twisting arms by imposing all of these sanctions and leveraging it. Pyongyang knows we can do it. Kim Jong-un knows I can do it. His generals know I can do it. So I'm going to walk into the meeting. I'm going to walk into the meeting in good faith next week in uh, Singapore. And I'm going to see how this plays out because I can always put those things in a place. But right now, I want to give this meeting the best chance of succeeding. He said the campaign hasn't changed. We're leaving all of the existing sanctions on. So he's not going to impose any new ones, but he is leaving all of the existing sanctions in place. And he then reiterated that he has many more to use, but he doesn't want to use them unless it's absolutely necessary. He's very clear about that. 
that, you know, I don't think it'll be necessary, but we'll know soon. Now, this is, um, this is such an interesting kind of diplomacy. He's also bringing Dennis Rodman with him. That's a new form of diplomacy. Kim Jong-un, big basketball fan. He was enamored with Dennis Rodman. You remember Rodman went there. Uh, and a lot of people thought that looked very bad. But I like that Trump understands how to play Kim Jong-un. Now, John Bolton will not be there in Singapore next week. And that's also a smart move. It doesn't mean that Bolton is out on the outs to president. It doesn't mean that we should read between the lines. What it means is that when Bolton talked about the Libya doctrine, and, and basically that was taken to mean that if a nation denuclearizes, as Libya did, well, their leader might find themselves dead with their body being paraded through the streets not long after. So when Bolton spoke about Libya, Kim Jong-un, North Korean leader, got visibly uh, upset. It's almost killed the meeting. Trump realizes, hey, look, we need peace in that region. We need peace on the Korean peninsula. We're probably never going to get true peace from this guy, but at least if we can neutralize him a little bit, if we can calm this maniac down, well, that's better than nothing. You've got Secretary of State Mike Pompeo going with the president. Pompeo has done so far an outstanding job at keeping Kim Jong-un in check, at getting him to come to the table. You've got the president there. And John Bolton is going to be with the National Security Council in the White House, a, a, a video conference or phone call away if needed. Don't bring him if it's going to put the meeting in jeopardy. There's no harm, no foul, and no loss of face to the United States. And you know that. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care if it's Donald Trump. I don't care if it's any president I back. If a move is made that I don't agree with, I'm going to call it out. I'm not a cheerleader. I've, I've never been a cheerleader. I've never been me. I've never been that guy. So uh, Trump also jabbed North Korea a little bit because he ended the session with uh, Prime Minister Abe of Japan today where they were mostly talking about North Korea. Japan is seriously affected by whatever happens in North Korea. The weapons, the nuclear weapons North Korea is, are, is trying to build can easily reach Japan. Their rockets, allegedly, can reach Japan. So Japan has many dogs in this fight. And Trump ended by paying tribute to the family of Otto Warmbier, of course, the student who died last June <clears throat> after being released from uh, 17 months in North Korean captivity. He, when, they, when we got him back, he was brain dead. It was a terrible case. President said of Warmbier, he has not died in vain. I can tell you that. He has not died in vain. To the Warmbier family, our love and respect. We were tremendously successful in getting our three hostages back. I'm very thankful to the cooperation we received with North Korea. Now, he said about the other three hostages that they are very happily ensconced in their homes with their families. Families, they didn't think it was going to happen. And uh, he said, frankly, it wouldn't have happened, but it has. Now, Obama did not get these people out. Obama was the world's doormat. Trump then wrapped up and said, I really believe that we have the potential to do something incredible for the world. It's my honor to be involved. And the president's right. The potential to do something great for the world really is there. See, Trump is a doer. He's getting things done, whereas others were rhetorical. All they did was talk about getting things done. So you've got people on the left saying, oh, Trump is running there, and he did what North Korea asked, and North Korea won. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They came begging. They came back to the White House with that big envelope, begging for this meeting, <clears throat> begging for the United States to come back to the table. We're winning this one. We're winning this one in a very big, very public, and very positive way. I want to bring you this content every day, so help me do that by subscribing to our premium service at www.therebel.media forward slash shows. Go to the App Store. Download the great Rebel app. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday.